Hello and welcome to the 2023 Mastermind Grand Final with me, Clive Myrie. The first finalist in the spotlight tonight is Ben Spicer, a bar manager from Shropshire, whose specialist subject is British and Irish Lions tours in the 21st century. James Beebe, a charity director from Croydon. His subject is the younger sister of Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Margaret. Michael McPartland, a civil servant from Middlesbrough. He'll be answering questions on the Rocky films starring Sylvester Stallone. Stephen Finn, a retired lawyer from Herefordshire, whose specialist subject is Bletchley Park during the Second World War. James Davidson, a commercial insight executive from Aberdeen. His subject, the Roman Emperor Augustus Caesar. And Stuart Field, an administrator from Sheffield. He'll be answering questions on the BBC sitcom Extras, starring Ricky Gervais. It was quite a while ago that we began this journey, the long road to reach tonight's Mastermind Grand Final. The ultimate destination of choice, of course, for all serious quizzes. There were stumbles and bumps along the way for those contenders who fell a little short. Their nerves were jangled. The glare of the spotlight was too bright. The black chair just a little too intimidating. But six intrepid travellers managed to battle through it all across the heats and semis to be with us tonight. And the prize for their labours, this magnificent glass bowl made by Dennis Mann along with the title of Mastermind Champion in this, the 50th year since Magnus Magnusson first welcomed viewers to the show. Two minutes on their special subject and two and a half minutes on general knowledge will decide who wears the crown. So, can I ask our first finalist to join us, please? Your name? Ben Spicer. Your occupation? Bar manager. And your specialist subject? British and Irish Lions tours in the 21st century. I'm from Bridge North, a little market town in Shropshire. I'm a bar manager. I really enjoy my job. At the pub, uh, all the regulars, they're sort of my fan club, and, you know, they tell me I can't come back unless, unless I bring home the glass bowl, so that's what I've got to do. My passions and my hobbies, obviously quizzing's a big one, hence why I'm on the show, but I also really love rugby. I come from a big rugby family. My mum used to be the treasurer of Bridge North Rugby Club, and my dad, I used to play with my dad in the third and fourth teams for the club. In terms of his strengths at quizzing, he definitely puts the work in. Uh, he, he's very competitive. He expects to win when he takes part. He gets rather upset when that doesn't happen. So for my specialist subject in the final, I've chosen British and Irish Lions in the 21st century. The British and Irish Lions are a rugby union team that bring together the best players from England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland into one team. They tour once every four years and they go to the Southern Hemisphere, so they tour to Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. And it's just great to see all those players come together into a single team and see how well they can play together. Uh, my mum's been really helping me with my specialist subject revision, asking me all sorts of questions, throwing them at me all the time. Here you go, Ben. So Ben is a great contender because he's so dedicated to learning. Um, however, he hasn't really got there without his mum. Um, I, in fact, I actually think that probably I should be on Mastermind, all the studying that I've done for him or with him. In the heats, I was doing Peaky Blinders as my specialist subject, so I thought, what better thing to wear than, than the Peaky Blinders, you know, full outfit? And then the semi-final, thought, I've got to try and do something as well. So I wore a colourful shirt with guitars on, to tie into the musical theme. And then for the final, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I'll try and pull out something special. <laughs> so my sister brings me back down to earth, and she, you know, she tells me, no matter how well I do, you know, I've always got to do better. Um, ben, we do have uh, a message that's just come through for you. I hope you like it. Ooh. Hi, Ben. Congratulations on getting to the grand final of Mastermind. I want to wish you all the best and good luck. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's fantastic. British and Irish Lions tours in the 21st century. In two minutes, 
Let's go. The first British and Irish Lions Test match victory of the 21st century came at which Australian cricket ground in 2001? The Gabba. Yes, in 2021, which South African player made his second serious clinching kick against the Lions 12 years after his first? Maurice Stein. Yes. What's the title of the song written by Neil Myers and first performed by Catherine Jenkins that the Lions commissioned for their tour of New Zealand in 2005? The Power Four. Yes, before the final test of the 2001 series, Austin Healy wrote of which combative Australian forward, me and the plank, do you think one of us will have the final say? I'll say so. Justin Harrison. Yes, the Lions' lock, Maro Itoje, was the official custodian of Bill, the team's Lion mascot, in 2017. Which other player was given this role four years later? Louis Wee Summit. Yes, the Lions won every match they played outside the Test Series on the 2009 tour, except for their game against which team with whom they drew at Newland Stadium? Emerging Springboks. Yes. What was the name of the trophy that Sam Warburton and Alan Wynne-Jones lifted after the Lions won the 2013 tour to Australia? The Tom Richards Cup. Yes. In response to criticism from the New Zealand media, what fancy dress item did Lions head coach Warren Gatlin wear to his final press conference in the 2017 tour? A clown nose. Yes. On the 2005 tour to New Zealand, three Scotland players were selected in the initial touring party, the forward Simon Taylor and Gordon Bullock. And which back? <sighs> Pass. After 16 games across three different tours, the England second row, Simon Shaw, finally made his test debut for the Lions in which city? Uh, Johannesburg. No, Pretoria. The 2017 tour had the unique occurrence of the Lions going up against their head coach, Warren Gatlin's son, Bryn, who was playing for the Provincial Barbarians in which position? Fly half. Yes. Which English Premiership club provided the two players selected as fullbacks for the 2001 Lions Tour of Australia? Bath. Yes. During a fines meeting on the 2013 Tour to Australia, which player's punishment was to make a phone call to his club coach, Rob Penny, and ask to be appointed as captain for the following year? Half Penny? No. Simon Zebo. And Ben, you had just the one pass. The name of the back on that 2005 tour to New Zealand, Chris Cossiter. And at the end of that run, Ben, you've got 10 points. Thank you. And our next finalist, please. Your name? James Beebe. Your occupation? Charity director. And your specialist subject? Princess Margaret. I really love history, love traveling, going to new places all the time. But I'm not your typical quizzer, so Mastermind is a really a leap into the unknown for me. I'm loving it. <laughs> As a quizzer, he's really competitive and can be quite annoying with it too. Um, I mean, you've been helping him with his quizzing and his revision, haven't you? Yeah, and James is one of my closest friends, and um, he, when he told me he was going to be on Mastermind, I had a lot of confidence in him because he's got an amazing memory. He remembers all sorts of random facts. So for the final of Mastermind, I've chosen to answer questions about Princess Margaret. Princess Margaret was the Queen's younger sister. She was four years younger than her. When she was young, she was incredibly beautiful, very popular, very fashionable, very glamorous, um, a real celebrity in her day. Princess Margaret herself, I, I think, is kind of something of an intriguing figure. Um, you know, she wasn't born to have power, and so she had to create a, a role for herself. But then, as she got older, and you know, her personal life had its ups and downs people kind of turned against her a bit, which is a real shame. Whereas actually, you know, she, was, she did a lot of charity, she was really loved by family and friends. Um, and I think she's being re-evaluated a little bit now. I think it's, it's high time and it's a nice opportunity to shine a bit of a light on some of the good things that she did and the positive things that she should be remembered for. Well, Jane, it's very nice to meet you. Um, thank you so much for asking me. Uh, to come on with you, and I hope I, I'll be able to answer your questions. Obviously, I've read about it in your book, but if you could talk about the start of your, of your friendship with the princess. I was three years old when I first remember her. Now, the minute I saw Princess Morgan, she saw me, we realised that, uh, you know, we were going to be friends. We were both quite naughty. I think the Queen was all fed up with us. She kept on saying, oh, Margaret, now, what are you doing? There's a photograph taken of us, and Miss Margaret's looking at my feet. And I, quite a long time afterwards, I said to her, ma'am, why were you looking at my feet? 
And she said, well, she said, you had silver shoes and we had brown lace-ups. And I was very, very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, James. Um, I'll be watching you and I do hope you win. Uh, and that I will have helped you win too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, you, you certainly have. <laughs> Hello, James. I've got something you might be interested in. OK. And it is right in front of you. I presume you know what that is. I do indeed, yes. It was a dress from her, her 21st, wasn't it? Exactly. So this has actually been made by Christiane Dior. She wore it to a ball in Paris. Apparently, she was the person who danced the most at night. And I think it's just such a fairy tale story. Well, thank you for taking the time to Show me the dress. It's been a real pleasure. I've enjoyed it so You're much. You're welcome. If I did win the bowl, um, I'm sure I'd find somewhere for it to go. It's probably somewhere up behind me over there. But I definitely have to keep it out of the way of our cat, Fernando. Princess Margaret, in two minutes, let's go. What first name had her parents originally selected for the infant Margaret Rose, though it was rejected because her grandfather, King George V, didn't like it? Yes, following the abdication of their uncle in 1936, the princesses were horrified to learn that they'd be moving to Buckingham Palace from the family home at what central London address? 145 Piccadilly. Yes, the playwright J.M. Barry promised the young Margaret a bag of pennies in royalties after he incorporated some of her phrases into the dialogue of what 1936 play? The Boy David. Yes, in 1949, Margaret succeeded her sister as Commodore of what organisation for young people? Sea Rangers. Yes, after Margaret brushed a bit of fluff from Peter Townsend's uniform at the coronation, which newspaper broke the story, describing it as quite unthinkable that a royal princess should even contemplate a marriage with a man who has been through the divorce courts? The People. Yes, what was the name of the grandson of Edwin Lutyens, whose proposal Margaret accepted in 1958, though she subsequently ended the relationship when he confessed to a holiday romance? Billy Wallace. Yes, in February 1958, Margaret was introduced to her future husband, the photographer Anthony Armstrong Jones, at a private dinner party given by which mutual friend? Lady Elizabeth Cavendish. Yes, what was the name of Armstrong Jones's uncle who designed Les Jolies Heures, Margaret's holiday home on the island of Mustique? Oliver Messel. Yes, during Margaret's first visit to the United States in 1965, she and Armstrong Jones made a much publicised visit to the set of which Alfred Hitchcock film? Torn Curtain. Yes. What was the name of the Wiltshire farm where Margaret spent weekends in the mid-1970s with Rory Llewellyn? Sorendale. Yes. In 1988, Margaret officially opened what centre for people with HIV and AIDS in Ladbroke Grove, which she'd helped to set up the previous year? London Lighthouse. Yes. Which tiara was loaned by Margaret to Serena Stanhope for her wedding to David, Margaret's son? The Lotus Flower. Yes, in December 2001, Margaret made her final public appearance at the 100th birthday celebrations of which member of the royal family? Princess Alice. Yes, as mourners filed in for Margaret's funeral service in St George's Chapel in 2002, I've started, so I'll finish. The organist played music from which ballet by Tchaikovsky? Swan Lake. It was Swan Lake. James, you had no passes. You got them all right. 14 points. Thank you. And our next finalist, please. Your name? Michael McParland. Your occupation? Civil servant. And your specialist subject? The Rocky films. I'm from Middlesbrough. I've lived in Middlesbrough all my life. Big football fan, love, love the borough. Pretty much every any sport, I'll watch it. Sports films as well. See, I'm doing Rocky in the final. So the first Rocky film uh, came out in 1976. It starred Sylvester Stallone, who no one at the time had really heard of. So basically it tells the story of an underdog. He came from nothing, fought for the World Heavyweight title, and then his battles after that as well. Uh, it won the Oscar for Best Film. See, it spawned seven sequels since then. He's a man who never gave up. So hopefully that'll inspire me to keep going and I'll pick up that prize. So this is my third time on uh, Mastermind. Uh, I was first on in 2010. Your subject tonight? The Sharp Novels of Bernard Cornwell. I got through it with semi-finals. Then I went back on in 2014 and I managed to get through to the grand final. And your chosen subject? The Salem Witch Trials. So I've come back again and hopefully one step better this time and pick up the trophy. It's the biggest prize in TV quizzing. I can't really give it up until I've finally won it. Uh, I've come so close, so I've got to keep on going and hopefully this is the time. 
When the kids were, were much younger, we entered, we had to find ways of entertaining them in the car. And it was either a sponsored silence or it was a quiz. And the most attractive proposition turned out to be the quiz. And that really was the beginning of uh, Michael, in particular, wanting to be really, really good at quizzing. Usually I'm fairly good in a pub quiz or playing a board game, but I've no chance against Michael. I think I've beaten him maybe twice in 30 years. Uh, Michael, I think, was the most determined that he was going to be the best. He's worked so hard, so I'm just hoping that it's third time lucky for him. I hope he does really good, like he always does. Wish me luck, I'm going to need it. The Rocky films in two minutes. Let's go. In the original film, when the world heavyweight champion Apollo Creed enters the arena for his climactic fight against Rocky Balboa, he's dressed as which historical figure? George Washington. Yes, who won the Best Director Oscar for Rocky in 1977, but was later nominated for the Golden Raspberry Award or Razzie for Worst Director for his work on Rocky V. John G. Alvidson. Yes, the third film's opening montage includes footage of Sylvester Stallone making a television appearance with a group of which children's characters? Muppets. Yes, when Rocky goes on his first date with his future wife, Adrian, he tells her that he originally dislocated his finger in a fight against which boxer whom he describes as about the size of an aeroplane? Baby Crenshaw. Yes, in the third film, what's the name of the rundown facility in Los Angeles where Apollo trains Rocky for his rematch against the new world champion Clubber Lang? Tough Jim. Yes, what's the name of the character who, on seeing Adrian and Rocky's baby son for the first time, says, is that it? Uh, Polly. No, Mickey. In Rocky IV, which singer and guitarist performs the song Hearts on Fire that accompanies one of the film's training montages and the film's closing credits? John Cafferty. Yes, what's the name of the sculptor who created the statue of Rocky that's unveiled outside the Philadelphia Museum of Art in the third film? A. Albert Stummel. No, Thomas Schomburg. At the start of Rocky's first training session before his fight with Mason Dixon, his trainer tells him to use pile-driving punches that will hurt so much they'll rattle Dixon's what? In. No, ancestors. According to her gravestone, which Rocky visits in the later films, Rocky's late wife, Adrian, had been born on what date in 1950? 1st of July. No, 10th of March. In Creed, when Apollo's son, Adonis, sees a photograph of Rocky and his son, Robert, and asks whether Robert is still around, Rocky replies that he and his girlfriend moved away to which city? Vancouver. Yes. Before his rematch with Rocky, Club Alag is asked in his dressing room to give his prediction for the fight. What's his single word reply? Pain. Yes. When Rocky gets up at 4 a.m. to exercise in the original film, he consumes how many raw eggs before going for a run through the streets of Philadelphia? Five. It is five. Michael, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got nine points. And our next finalist, please. Your name? Stephen Finn. Your occupation? I'm a retired lawyer. And your specialist subject? It's Bletchley Park during the Second World War. I'm a retired lawyer, but I'm, I'm now living in, uh, in sunny Herefordshire. So Mastermind's given Stephen a reason to study subjects that he's previously found very interesting. Um, he is a bookworm. He's always got his face in a book. My biggest supporter, undoubtedly, is my wife, Sally. I mean, we've been married since 1988 and uh, she, she's all the things that I'm not. You know, she's sensible, focused, efficient. Sally has, uh, has been rather impressed into helping me. It's junk. I'll see again. I've tried to help Stephen in his preparation as much as I can. Um, we've been doing lots of revision, lots of flashcards. And never cackled. Winston Churchill. Yay! She's been encouraging me uh, to sit at my desk and to, to read the books and to learn the stuff. And um, certainly without her, I wouldn't be here. Well done. For the final, um, as my subject, I've chosen Bletchley Park during the Second World War. Bletchley Park in the Second World War was the centre of the British code-breaking effort. Britain, at the early part of the war, stood alone, and it was very important that they could get any edge they could, and understanding what the Germans were saying to each other was vital. I don't think people are aware of how many young women we're working at Bletchley Park at the height of the war, uh, and hopefully Stephen choosing the subject will shine a light on the role women 
played during the war, an important role. I've come to Bletchley Park. You can get a lot of information from books, but somehow being here, seeing it in, you know, in all its glory, um, there's no substitute for that, is there? You've been the, the official historian here for, was it seven years or so? Yes. And such. So one of the things that's impressed me about this place is the size of the organisation during the Second World War. This is something that surprises a lot of people. And at the start of the war, it's quite small, it's only 100. But by 1945, there are nearly 9,000 people working here. And some of the sort of the TV and film portrayals really compress it down yeah. into being sort of half a dozen boffins, and it really Wrong wasn't. It, it was a huge mm. exercise. Yeah. How did they keep people motivated during that time? This, this is also one of the questions that our visitors are fascinated by, is how did people keep going and how did they, how did they yeah. keep the secret as well? well yeah. And the answer is there was a war on. And you think about... 75% of the staff here by the peak were, 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 were women, but all of those women would have known men who were potentially on yeah. the battlefronts. Mm, that's true. And you want to do your best because you know that someone's life could depend on it out at the other end. Uh, something a little bit unexpected for you from a very special lady. This is Betty Webb, and she's sent a little message for you. Oh, my goodness. Um, hi, Stephen. I'm Betty Webb. I was part of the code-breaking team here at Bletchley Park during World War II wow. when I was 18 years old. Mm. It's great that people are recognising the importance of the work we did. I wish you good luck on your mission to become the mastermind champion. Wow, that was, uh, that was really nice. <laughs> do thank Betty for me. We uh, that, was, that was a lovely thing for her to do for me. <laughs> but I'm really going to have to get stuck into those books now, I think. <laughs> Bletchley Park during the Second World War in two minutes. Let's go. Admiral Sir Hugh Sinclair, who paid with his own money for the purchase of Bletchley Park in 1938, was the head of which of the intelligence services? Um, the SIS. Yes, MI6. At the outbreak of the war in 1939, which Cambridge University academic led the team of Alan Turing, Peter Twin and John Jeffries in attempts to break the German Enigma code? Dilly Knox. Yes. Which Royal Navy aircraft carrier was sunk along with two destroyers on the 8th of June 1940 after warnings from Bletchley Park that German warships were preparing to leave the Baltic Sea were ignored? That's HMS Glorious. Yes. Alan Turing's so-called bomb machine, which was used to decipher secret messages from the German Enigma device, was based on the similar bombas machines designed by codebreakers from which country? From Poland. Yes. In August 1940, a second and much faster bomb machine was built and was known informally as Ag a name that was short for what? Uh, Agnes Dei. Yes. Which codebreaker decoded Italian messages in late March 1941 that led directly to the Allied naval victory at the Battle of Matapan? Uh, Mavis Beatty. Yes. The MI6 head of station in Norway and the Norwegian commander-in-chief communicated with Bletchley Park using a book code based on what 1865 collection of essays by John Ruskin? Uh, Sesame and Lilies. Yes. Messages decoded in Hut 6 were passed to Hut 3, which in turn prioritised them into four piles, the least urgent of which was known by what name? A German word for nonsense. Zilch. No, Kvatch. The cipher machine, codenamed Tunny by the British, was built by which German company? Lorenz. Yes. What was the alphanumeric name of the Italian Navy version of the Enigma code that was broken at Bletchley Park in July 1941? Uh, C-38M. Yes. The electronic valve code-breaking machine known as Colossus was designed by Tommy Flowers, who'd been brought to Bletchley Park to try to fix problems with which other machine? Uh, with the Heath Robinson. Yes. Which senior member of the naval section was known as Scrounger because of his determination to obtain whatever equipment the naval codebreakers needed. Uh, it was Green. Yes, Edmund Green. A fourth wheel, I've started so I'll finish, was added to U-boat Enigma machines on the 1st of February 1942, creating a more complex cipher that was known at Bletchley Park by what name? It was known as Shark. It was known as Shark. Yep. Thank you. And Stephen, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 12 points. Thank you very much. And our next finalist, please. Your name? James Davidson. Your occupation? Commercial Insight Executive. And your specialist subject? Augustus Caesar. I'm originally from uh, Frisborough in Aberdeenshire, but I've lived in Aberdeen now for an eight years. It's a lovely small city and it's a great place to live. 
Mastermind is the first uh, TV show I've ever appeared on. Um, I've never, I enjoy kind of quizzing with the TV, just shouting answers there, but I've never uh, done a serious quizzing, just like the odd pub quiz every now and again. So to get all the way to the final in my first ever try, it's just incredible. James was always a cheeky chap when growing up. Um, he was always very studious. The type of books he reads are way over my head. He's just always wanted to learn. First place by one point, it's James. Going into the semi-finals, I had like no expectations of getting any further. I wasn't expecting to even be there. So I was very surprised. I think it would probably show in my face when, when Clive says that I won. It's come to no surprise to us that he's reached the final. Says, I'm so proud to be his auntie. So for the grand final, I've chosen Emperor Augustus. He was the first emperor of Rome and also the longest ruling. He ruled for 40 years and he set up a lot of the structural things that kept Rome going for the next 2000 years. So he's a very important figure in history. I'm on my way to learn a little bit more about my specialist subject at the Sir Duncan Rice Library at the University of Aberdeen. So to prepare for the grand final, I've gone to the library and pulled out every book on Augustus I could find. I kind of go through them and see if there's anything I think might be a question. So names, places, dates, things like that. We've got lots of things here, some of them more relevant, modern, reliable books that uh, will be useful. But we've also got things dating back hundreds of years, indeed thousands of years. So I've one thing here that I hope really will excite you, that this is a, an original coin. This is a coin of the Emperor Augustus. So tiny wee thing, but that's, that is the head of Augustus. That's a coin that would have been spent in ancient Rome yeah, when Augustus was on time. the throne. Yeah. So best of luck with the competition, and I hope we'll see you as a winner afterwards. Thank you. So being a finalist in Mastermind on its 50th year is just incredible. It's, hopefully I'll keep the, the nerves under check and just kind of enjoy the experience when I'm there. Augustus Caesar. In two minutes, let's go. What Latin name, translated as things done, is given to the first person record of the accomplishments of Augustus that was displayed on two bronze pillars near his mausoleum in Rome? Historia Augusta. No, res gestae. What was the name of the wife of Augustus whom, according to the Roman historian Dio, he divorced on the same day that she gave birth to his daughter Julia? Scribonia. Yes. What was the name of the law passed in 43 BC that gave legal basis to the triumvirate established by Augustus, or Octavian, as he's usually known at that time? Mark Antony and Lepidus. Lex Titia. Yes. In 35 BC, Augustus was injured when a bridge collapsed during the siege of which town in Illyricum? Uh, Manulus. No, it's Metulum. Which general sent by Augustus was in command of the fleet that defeated the forces of Mark Antony and Cleopatra at the Battle of Actium? Agrippa. Yes. When he was in poor health, Augustus wrote to his close advisor, Mycenas, saying that he'd take which poet from his parasitic table to help with his letter writing? Horus. Yes, the mock naval battle, the Normachia Augusti, held in 2 BC, was staged by Augustus to mark the dedication of which temple in Rome? Uh, the Temple of Apollo? No, Mars Altor. What was the usual name of the grandson whom Augustus adopted in AD 4, only to send him into exile three years later? Agrippa Posthumus? Yes. In AD 9, Augustus reportedly exclaimed, Quinctilius Varus, give me back my legions, following the disastrous Roman defeat at what is now known as the Battle of what forest? Uh, the Teutoburg Forest. Yes, in the Reis Gestae, Augustus states that embassies were often sent to him from the kings of which country, which was a thing never seen before in the camp of any Roman general? Uh, India. Yes, according to the Roman historian Dio, Augustus had been eating what fruit just before his death, leading to rumours that his wife Livia might have poisoned him? Figs. Yes, according to Suetonius. Which public space was the site where the body of Augustus was cremated in AD 14? Uh, the... For Forum Julia? No, Campus Martius. Which Greek philosopher, a tutor? I've started to all finish. Which Greek philosopher, a tutor to the young Augustus, is said to have advised the future emperor that when you are angry, recite the alphabet before you speak? Athenodorus? It was Athenodorus. And James, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got nine points. Thank you. And now, our final contender, please. Your name? Stuart Field. Your occupation? Administrator. And your specialist subject? The BBC sitcom Extras. I live in a wonderful city of Sheffield. I live on a sleepy cul-de-sac with my partner, Elaine. 
once Stuart puts his mind to something, is completely focused, um, very driven, and you know gives it 110 percent. And that's what he's done on this process. So uh, yes, he's certainly put the hours in, but it's worth it so far because he's done so well and got to the final. Mastermind's really the only program I've really wanted to win, and so this is it now for me. I want to win this. Well, I feel I've got out of jail twice, getting to the final. In the heat, I won on a tie break. Tonight's winner with 29 points is Stuart. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the semi-final, I won on the lowest number of passes. With 23 points and one pass, it's Stuart. They were both very stressful. I thought I'd basically lost both. And when I was declared the winner, that was probably the biggest shock uh, I've ever had in my life. Uh, back in 1980, I saw a chap called Fred Housego win Mastermind. Your name, please? Fred Housego. He was a, a taxi driver, which is uh, out of the ordinary, out of the norm, from the normal professions of people that had won Mastermind previously. I thought, one day, I'm going to be in the chair. Hi, Stuart, I'm Fred Housego, and I'm delighted to know that you watched me win Mastermind when you were 13 years of age. Now in the 50th anniversary, you're in the chair. It's your opportunity to take this bowl home. Good luck. That's a real shot in the arm. Um, if Fred can do it all those years ago, I see no reason why I can't do it myself. My specialist subject for the final is the BBC sitcom Extras. Mr Yamaguchi's on his way up now with his lovely wife. As you know, he's thinking of investing in us, and if he does, it'll be the best thing that happened to this company since old Gladys the Cook burnt down the canteen. <laughs> it's basically the funniest TV programme ever, in my opinion. Very cleverly written by Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Are you having a laugh? Is she having a laugh? <laughs> it works on so many different levels. It's very intricately written. It can tug at the heartstrings. It can be extremely painful to watch. Are you having a laugh? But I just think it's brilliant. Is it Is it I envisage for the Bastaman Grand Final having about between 1,000 and 1,200 flashcards. I don't want to leave anything to chance, basically. Mastermind has uh, sort of taken over Stuart's life, certainly, <laughs> over the last nine months or so. So, Stuart, we know uh, how hard you've worked to get to this Mastermind Final. Yeah. And somebody here has got a very special message for you. Oh. Can't wait to see. Let's have a look. Oh, Hi, Stuart. Ricky. I just wanted to wish you luck <laughs> on Mastermind. Answering questions on extras. Have fun. And remember, it's not the winning, it's the taking part. Exactly. That counts. Although, if you don't win, you are technically a loser. <laughs> Obviously. Wow, Cheers. Ricky, that's amazing. Thank you. God, thank you, love. Thank you. <laughs> If I won Mastermind, I would dedicate the win to my partner, Elaine. She'd been very, very selfless, and the bowl would be probably as much hers as it's mine, to be honest. Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant's comedy series about the ambitious film extra Andy Millman and his equally hapless colleagues. In two minutes, let's go. Andy Millman's nemesis, Greg Lindley-Jones, whom Ricky Gervais has described as smug, more successful and very ungracious in victory, is played by which actor? Sean Pye. Yes, yeah, scenes from one episode in the first series had to be filmed a month before production was due to begin in order to accommodate the availability of which guest star? Um, Samuel L. Jackson? Yes, to convince his colleagues that he's actually done some real acting work and he claims that he once had a part in what sitcom showing a ticket to a bus conductor? My family. Yes, in the Christmas special, Andy decides to leave his useless manager, Darren Lamb, and sign up with a much slicker agent who is one of the partners at which management company? Cooper Stockwell Joyce. Yes, when Andy's friend Maggie pretends she has stomach trouble in order to get close to an actor she fancies in a queue for the toilets, which actress plays the extra who allows her through? Catherine Parkinson. Yes, what's the name of the club that Andy visits? It's on the recommendation of Barry Off Enders, who says it's where the cast of the soap used to go to avoid the public. Castro's. Yes, a newspaper photograph shows Andy and his new friend Jonathan Ross having fun at Ross's house, which, according to Andy, is in which English seaside town? Swanage. Yes. When the singer Chris Martin makes a charity appeal video, 
which track by his band Coldplay does he start singing as a suggestion for music to play in the background? Trouble. Yes, what's the name of the credited writer of the play A Month of Summers, in which Andy appears in an attempt to add some classier work to his portfolio, and which is directed by Sir Ian McKellen? Charlie Haywood. Yes, when a new neighbour named Cathy moves into Andy's apartment block, he tells her that he lives on the second floor at what number? 21. Yes, what's the name of the main editor of the series who worked in a room close to the filming set at Pinewood Studios? Nigel Williams? Yes. According to a CV sent out by Darren Lamb between 1986 and 1999, Andy worked at a high street bank in which English market town? Wokingham. Yes. What's the name of the ward in the neurology block at St Matthew's Hospital, where Andy begrudgingly visits a sick young fan named Joe? Parrot Ward. Yes. Andy is so desperate to get a line in a film being made by Ben Stiller about Goran, a war survivor, that he bribes Goran with a clothes shop voucher worth how many pounds? Fifteen. Yes. When... I'm sorry, it's all finished. When Andy is befriended by a fellow extra played by Steve Spears, he's decidedly underwhelmed to be invited round on a Sunday afternoon to watch a DVD of what film? Vera Drake. It is Vera Drake. And Stuart, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you nailed every one. 15 points. Thank you, Clive. Thank you. <laughs> A tense final, but there is still plenty of time for everyone. Let's have a look at the scores. In joint fifth place, with nine points each, Michael McPartland and James Davidson. In fourth place, with ten points, Ben Spicer. In third place, with 12 points, it's Stephen Finn. In second place, with 14 points, it's James Beebe. And in first place, with 15 points, it's Stuart Field. <laughs> It's one last push now for our finalists. The chequered flag is in sight as we begin the general knowledge round. If there's a tie at the end, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the mastermind champion. And if they're tied on passes as well, then it's a tie break to determine the winner. So let's ask Michael to join us again, please. Michael, you start with nine points. You've got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. According to a common expression suggesting that both parties involved in something are equally responsible, it takes two to what? Tango. Yes, in the Gregorian calendar, seven of the 12 months of the year each last for how many days? 31. Yes. The chemical symbol for which metallic element comes from its Latin name, Callium? Uh... Uh, potassium. Yes. What's the name of the main library at the University of Oxford, which is entitled to receive a free copy of any printed work published in the UK? Bodleian. Yes. Which US state has the two-letter postal abbreviation NJ? New Jersey. Yes. Jennifer Holliday starred as Effie White in the original 1981 Broadway production of which Tony Award-winning musical about a trio of singers from Chicago? Dreamgirls. Yes. In pregnant mammals, the placenta develops in the lining of which organ? The... Navel. No, Uterus. Which American singer became the Glastonbury Festival's youngest ever solo headline act when she performed on the Pyramid stage in 2022? Uh, Olivia Rodrigo. No, Billie Eilish. What's the name of the northernmost and second largest of the four main islands of Japan? Uh, Hokkaido. Yes. Which Conservative politician succeeded Lord Liverpool as UK Prime Minister in 1827 but died after only about four months in office? Canning? Yes. In football, which former head coach of Chelsea and Derby County was appointed as the manager of Everton in 2022? Uh, Frank Lampard? Yes. Since 1848, the Constitution of France has officially included the revolutionary principles of liberté, égalité, and what? Fraternité. Yes. Which actor directed and stars as Hercule Poirot in the 2022 film adaptation of Agatha Christie's murder mystery, Death on the Nile? Kenneth Branagh. Yes. Which Russian composer wrote the music for the ballet Romeo and Juliet, first performed in 1938? Prokofiev. Yes. Graham Flower, which is widely used in Asian cookery, is made from what type of pulse? Lentil. No, Chickpea, which Scottish town northwest of Edinburgh across the Firth of Forth was granted city status in 2022 as part of Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee celebrations? Dumbarton. No, Dunfermline, which Renaissance artist and scientist created the famous drawing known as Vitruvian Man, illustrating the proportions of the human body. Da Vinci. Yes, before it adopted the euro in 2007, which country used a basic unit of currency called the tollar? Uh... Slovenia? Yes. Which observatory, about 45 miles from San Diego in California, houses the powerful Hale Telescope? 
the Berkeley? No, Palomar. In 1301, Edward, the eldest surviving son of King Edward I and Eleanor of Castile, became the first heir apparent to hold what royal title? Prince of Wales. Yes, it was Prince of Wales. Uh, Michael, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got a total of 24 points. Thank you. Next up, let's have James Davidson. James, you start with nine points. The score to beat, as it stands, is 24 points. And you've got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. The word Madonna refers to which religious figure or an artistic depiction of her? Uh, Virgin Mary. Yes, the specially designed car that carries the coffin at a funeral is known by what name? Hearse. Yes, in chemistry, the name of which SI unit used to measure large numbers of very small entities, such as atoms or particles, is also the name of a small burrowing mammal. Mole. Yes, which British rapper won the 2022 Mercury Music Prize for her album, Sometimes I Might Be Introvert? Little Sims. Yes, what vegetable is known in Italian as cavolo and in German as coal? Carrot. No, cabbage. King Manuel II was the last king of which European country before it became a republic in 1910? Uh... Russia. No, Portugal. The character is referred to in the title of the 1966 film The Good, the Bad and the Ugly are played by Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef and which other actor? Eli Wallach. Yes, the Lewis Carroll nonsense poem Jabberwocky contains the warnings beware the Jubjub bird and shun the frumious what? Snark. No, Bandersnatch. In 2020, which presenter and actor took over as the new host of the television game show Blankety Blank? Uh, Bradley Walsh. Yes, which river forms most of the county boundary between Devon and Cornwall? The Severn. No, the Tamar. What levy on goods and services was introduced in the UK in 1973 to replace purchase tax and selective employment tax? Uh, VAT. Yes, VAT. Domestic utility and kitchen appliances such as fridges, dishwashers and washing machines are often known collectively as what colour goods? White. Yes, which rugby league club won a record fourth consecutive Super League title with victory over Leeds Rhinos in the 2022 Grand Final? Hornets. No, St Helens. What word commonly used to mean extremely frightened literally means turned to stone? Petrified. Yes, in British pre-decimal currency a farthing was worth what fraction of a penny? A quarter. Yes. What stage musical based on a 1952 film premiered in London's West End in 1983 starring Tommy Steele, Roy Castle and Danielle Carson? A half a sixpence. No, Singing in the Rain. What French name for a type of dairy product is also used in English and translates literally as fresh cheese? Fromage frais. Yes. Willow, who became a resident of the White House in January 2022, is what type of pet? A dog. No, Cat, which British composer wrote a romance for violin and orchestra entitled The Lark Ascending, inspired by a poem of the same title by George Meredith. Vaughan Williams. Yes. In the Superman comics, what's the full name of the journalist at the Daily Planet newspaper who is the main love interest of Clark Kent? Lois Lane. Yes. It is Lois Lane. And James, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, 22 points. Thank you. Next up, let's have Ben. Ben, you start with 10 points. The score to beat as it stands is 24 points. You've got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. Which section of an orchestra that includes the trombones, trumpets and tubers is named after the alloy typically used to make the instruments? Brass. Yes. The 1963 Disney film The Sword in the Stone is loosely based on traditional tales of the boyhood of which legendary British king? King Arthur. Yes. Nephritis is a medical condition that causes inflammation in one or both of what pair of organs? The kidneys. Yes. Which English cricket team won the 2022 county championship title? Glamorgan. No, sorry. What's the Italian name, also used in English, for the thin, crispy breadsticks often served with appetizers before a meal? Fettuccine. No, Grassini. Pogo Patterson, Gripa Stebson and Zama Maguire were characters in what children's television school drama series that ran from 1978 to 2008? Grange Hill. Yes, which French writer whose works include A Man's Place and A Woman's Story won the 2022 Nobel Prize in Literature? Um, Fritz. No, Annie No. Which city is the capital of Zambia? Uh, Lusaka? Yes. In 2012, which actor, comedian and writer married the writer and presenter Victoria Corrin? 
David Mitchell. Yes, in the British Honours System, what award instituted in 1940 bears the inscription for gallantry? Victoria Cross. No, George Cross. In imperial measurements, how many feet are there in a yard? Twelve. No, three. In 2021, Christina McAnee was elected to succeed Dave Prentice as General Secretary of which trade union, one of the largest in the UK? Unite. No, unison. What word derived from a Latin verb meaning to change refers to the gradual shedding of hair or fur by certain animals to allow for new growth? Malting? Yes. What's the stage name of the American singer Melissa Vivian Jefferson, whose UK hit singles include Good As Hell in 2019 and About Damn Time in 2022? Lizzo. Yes, which Greek letter is often used to describe a dominant, highly competitive male in a social group? Alpha. Yes, what name is given in chemistry to a compound that reacts with acid to form water and a salt? Um, alkaline? No. Yes, base. Plants of the genus Fragaria produce what edible soft fruit? Apple. No, strawberry. The supermassive black hole at the centre of the Milky Way, pictured for the first time in 2022, is named after what nearby constellation? Venturi? No, Sagittarius, which global circus entertainment company headquartered in Montreal was founded in the 1980s by a troupe of street performers in the village of Bay St. Paul near Quebec City. Cirque du Soleil? Yes, a previously unknown self-portrait. I've started so I'll finish. Previously unknown self-portrait by which 19th century Dutch artist was revealed by X-rays in 2022 on the reverse of his painting, Head of a Peasant Woman. Van Gogh? Yes. Vincent van Gogh. And Ben, you had no passes, and at the end of that round, you've got 22 points. Next up, let's have Stephen. Stephen, you start with 12 points. The score to beat as it stands is 24 points. You've got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. Which European capital city's metro system has stations named Alexander Dumas, Victor Hugo and Voltaire? Be Paris. Yes, the Aylesbury is a white-feathered breed of what waterfowl? It's a duck. Yes, which British peer disappeared in 1974 after the murder of his children's nanny Sandra Rivet? Lucan. Yes, what's the surname of the American musician known as Weird Al, whose parodies of popular songs include Eat It and Smells Like Nirvana? Yankovic. Yes, the Italian liqueur, Frangelico, is flavoured mainly with what type of nut? A chestnut. No, hazelnut. In July 2022, which British tennis player partnered the American Desiree Krafchik to win the Wimbledon Mixed Doubles final for a second consecutive year? A Cathy McHugh. No, Neil Skupski. In physics, a proton is made up of three of what elementary particles? Um, neutrons. No, quarks. Which American author won the 1983 Pulitzer Prize for fiction with her novel The Color Purple? Pass. The term Celtic Tiger was used to describe which European country when its economy began to expand rapidly in the mid-1990s? was Ireland. Yes. If I were a bell, luck be a lady and sit down, you're rocking the boat. A song's from what stage musical? Is it Five Guys Named Mo? No, Guys and Dolls. The 2021 film Dune won six Oscars, including best original score for which composer? It pass. The American sculptor Gutzon Berglum is best known for the huge national memorial carved into the rock face of which mountain in South Dakota? Mount Rushmore. Yes. What was the name of the original presenter of the television quiz show University Challenge, who died in 2022 at the age of 87? Sandra Gascoigne. Yes. Immediately before his election to the papacy in 2013, Pope Francis was the archbishop of which city in South America? Uh, Rio de Janeiro. No, Buenos Aires. The prefix hecto, when added to words such as liter and gram, indicates a quantity of how many times such units? A thousand. No, one hundred. In Greek mythology, one of the twelve labours of Heracles was to steal the four flesh-eating horses that belonged to which king of Thrace? Aegeus. No, Diomedes. In various commercial ventures and on social media, the initials SJP stand for the name of which Emmy award-winning American actress? Pass. The wartime workers known as the Bevin Boys were young men conscripted from 1943 to work in which industry? Mining. Yes. What word from the Latin for footprint describes a body part or organ of a creature which has become functionless during the course of evolution? OTOs. No, vestigial. Vestigial, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, Stephen, you had three passes. The initials SJP, Sarah Jessica Parker. Fine, thank you. 
Yeah, the composer of the music for the film Dune, Hans Zimmer. And I think you know this, author of The Colour Purple, Alice Walker. I think I did know Yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Stephen, you've got 20 points. Thank you. Next up, it's James Beebe. James, you start with 14 points. The score to beat as it stands, 24 points. You've got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. In the name of the major British theatre company, the RSC, the letter S stands for the surname of which English playwright? Shakespeare. Yes, what word for a single-storied house is derived from a Hindi word, meaning a house in the Bengal style? Bungalow. Yes, according to the Book of Revelation in the New Testament, what three-digit number is the number of the beast? 666. Yes. Yellow Yellowalo, who won the women's elite race at the 2022 London Marathon, represents which East African country? Kenya? No, Ethiopia. What's the usual term for a castrated male horse? Foal. <laughs> no, Gelding, Millennium in 1998, Rock DJ in 2000, and Candy in 2012 were UK number one singles for which singer? Robbie Williams. Yes, which military unit was created by King Louis Philippe of France in 1831 to support the conquest of Algeria? Foreign Legion. Yes, in the 1970s television sitcom Faulty Towers, which actress played Sybil Faulty? Prunella Scales. Yes, in October 2022, which politician was sworn in as the first female Prime Minister of Italy? Uh, <laughs> someone Mussolini. <laughs> no, Georgia Maloney, the main campus of which American Ivy League university is in Ithaca in New York State? Yale? No, Cornell. In 1798, which romantic poet inherited a title of nobility in the family estate of Newstead Abbey in Nottinghamshire? Byron. Yes. What French word for hunter is used to designate a dish, typically of chicken, served in a mushroom and white wine sauce? Chasseur. Yes. A statue by Frederick William Pomeroy, which depicts the metaphorical figure of justice, stands on top of the dome of which London court building? Old Bailey. Yes. In snooker, assuming no fouls or free balls, the brown ball is worth how many points when it's potted? Ten. No, four. Which American filmmaker directed the award-winning films Moonlight and If Beale Street Could Talk? Oh, Scorsese. No, Barry Jenkins' Fingal's Cave, also known as the Hebrides Overture, is a work by which 19th-century German composer? Um, uh, Brahms. No, Mendelssohn, which Welsh port on Holy Island off the coast of Anglesey, as a passenger ferry terminal for regular crossings to and from Ireland? Hollyhead. Yes, which artist painted the official presidential portrait of Theodore Roosevelt, as well as a portrait of Woodrow Wilson commissioned by the National Gallery of Ireland? Um... Jackson Pollock. <laughs> no, Sergeant, the television presenter Lisa Snowden won the 2022 series of the celebrity version of which television cookery competition? MasterChef. Yes. James, you had no passes. At the end of that round, 25 points. Thank you. And finally, let's have Stuart again, please. Stuart, you start with 15 points the score to beat to become the 2023 Mastermind Champion. Is James's 25 points. You've got two and a half minutes on general knowledge. Let's go. The popular mnemonic, divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived, refers to each of the wives of which English king? Henry VIII. Yes, in the context of the national curriculum in schools, the letters P.E. stand for what? Physical education? Yes. Which Scottish singer had a UK number one single in September 2022 entitled Forget Me? Uh, Lizzie... Lizzie... No, Luis Capaldi. The name of which Museum of Art in Madrid can be translated from Spanish as Meadow? Prado? Yes. From 2007 to 2008, Dev Patel played the teenager Anwar Carroll in what BAFTA-winning British television drama series? Skins? Yes. Membership of the Northern Ireland Assembly is indicated by what three-letter abbreviation after a person's name? ABC. No, MLA. What French word is used in English as a term for the front of a large building and for an outer appearance that creates a deceptively false impression of something? Facade? Yes. At the 2022 Winter Olympics, which European country finished top of the medals table with 16 golds? Norway? Yes. The large African antelope, the wildebeest, is known by what alternative three-letter name? 
GNU. Yes, the mills referred to in the hymn popularly known as Jerusalem are described as dark and what? Satanic. Yes, what name? Because of their shape on a map is given to US states such as Florida and Oklahoma that each contain a long, narrow strip of land extending from their larger parts. Panhandle states? Yes, which large zoo in the northwest of England was opened in 1931 by an animal collector named George Mottershead? Um, Manchester. No, Chester. John Travolta was nominated for a Best Actor Oscar for his role as the disco dancer Tony Manero in what 1977 film? Saturday Night Fever. Yes, in which German city is the headquarters of the European Central Bank? Frankfurt. Yes, what adjective from Greek words meaning alongside one another describes lines that are separated by a distance that stays equal along their entire length? Parallel. Yes, the Japanese word gari is applied to an accompaniment to sushi consisting of the pickled, thinly sliced root of what plant? Carrot. No, ginger. The bird catcher Papageno is a character in which opera by Mozart? Um, Papageno, uh, the... Magic flu? Yes. Which fictional detective makes his first appearance in the 1929 novel The Crime at Black Dudley by Marjorie Allingham? Catfile? No, Albert Campion. Which of the planets in our solar system has the shortest day, taking just under 10 hours to rotate once on its axis? Venus? No, Jupiter. The French built Hua Law Prison was given what alliterative nickname by the American captives held there during the Vietnam War? Sing Sing? No, Hanoi Hilton. Stuart, it didn't matter. You've got 28 points. You are the champion. Absolutely incredible. You are the new mastermind champion. Many congratulations. Thank you, Clive. Let's have a look at the final scores. In sixth place with 20 points, it's Stephen Finn. In joint fourth place with 22 points each, Ben Spicer and James Davidson. In third place with 24 points sits Michael McPartland. In second place with 25 points, it's James Beebe. And in first place with 28 points, it's Stuart Field, which means that Stuart is the 2023 Mastermind Champion and takes home the coveted glass bowl. Many congratulations, Stuart. <laughs> I think this belongs to you. Oh, thanks, Officer. So and I life. could tell how much this meant to you. It's just the best day of my life. All those thousands and thousands, thousands of hours to all, it's all worth it. You said that victory would mean as much to your partner Elaine as it would to you. Yeah, Elaine, she's always been there for me. Um, I love her very much, and I thank her ever so much. Thank you. Fantastic. A huge thank you should go to, of course, all the contenders in this series, each and every one willing to brave the famous black chair. If you think you've got what it takes to become a mastermind champion like Stuart, or if you just want to test your knowledge, please go to our website, bbc.co.uk slash mastermind, and you can follow us as ever at Mastermind Quiz. Join us again next time when the search begins for our new mastermind champion. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I'd never dreamed I'd be studying here with this lovely bowl. To win this in the 50th year is just an incredible achievement. It's just amazing.